What is going on guys? So today I kind of wanted to go over Bonbon. When I made that tier list video a couple weeks ago, um, I had some people who were returning to the game ask me like, what the hell when I was playing, when I first started playing, Bonbon was considered meta. Why did you rank up so low? What's happening? Like, why is Bonbon so bad? I thought it'd be cool to kind of just go over Bonbon today. I'm going to be basically like furthering my point on explaining why Bonbon isn't really considered the best right now. And one, this current meta, two, and then overall for rank, I don't really think, I don't think he's bad in rank. I just think depending on the communication and the team comp, it can go either way. You know, if you're going up against a four-man VC team, you're probably going to struggle a little bit if they play characters that just resonate well with each other versus, you know, if you're just playing rank and it's just nothing but like randoms and the team comp is just made of like whatever then it's probably going to be in your favor um it really just depends on you know what the setup is so we'll just start by going over this match here so here gg hunter uh Zhao, um, as i've been told that it's called i'm i'm probably still pronouncing that wrong so forgive me here we have a weeping acrobat wild link and explorer typically whenever people pick explorer it's mostly just meant to like distract the hunter or um, as a character that they lock in just so they can kind of hide because realistically in a match you're not really going to find explorer unless you're playing like feaster the only time you really end up seeing explorer is when you have wanted order because no other trait allows you to actually see him you can't see him with peepers and you can't see him with the trait quenching like you have to actually have wanted order um in order to see him when he's small so typically when again when you pick someone like this it kind of forces the hunter to chase after one of the other team cup members in this case he's not really going to go after a wild link because bonbon's bon movement speed is pretty slow and with weeping he could go after weeping it might be kind of hard i feel like he's forced on the act right here bonbon's bon bands are roach coordinator dancer and charles i feel like these bands are fine coordinator it makes sense just because typically um you want to avoid like with bonbon bonbon bon mostly shines as a camper his chase isn't really the best and he has almost no like map pressure so having someone like coordinator be banned is nice specifically in the tournament setting only just because you don't have to worry about them basically getting a guaranteed rescue and that also doesn't force you to bring excitement so you end up having blink or warp as an option banning roach is also fine since it gets rid of her ability to set up portals across the map which basically allows them to transition so getting rid of her makes sense since you don't really want the stars to get too far and bon bon's movement speed is already slow as enough as it is same thing with dancer you know you want to just not have those boxes in your match just to kind of avoid them would I recommend these bands for rank? No. This is a tournament setting, so of course everything's gonna be a little bit different. Okay, tied on wall link, broken on weeping, broken on acrobat, and then tied on explorer. So the two cutters have broken windows, which is fine. They're gonna be getting more distance than normal. That's totally okay. Explorer has tied in case he needs to save from later. And the bonbon himself is carrying detention trump card with warp. Ever since warp came out, while I do agree that it's helped bonbon and it's impacting quite a bit, I still think though that it's pretty hard to play bonbon right now just because every character that is considered a meta has the potential well, to just uh, get a lot uh, of distance uh, and be really uh, fast. Uh, Lack of situational uh, awareness uh, from the app right here, so he ends up just getting kind of far, avoids that chip. As you can see though, through the speed boost, with the speed boost from the broken windows, um, Acrobat gets a little bit more distance than, you know, a person, like for example, carrying Flywheel or Tide would. That's the other thing too. Nobody's carrying Flywheel in this team comp, but also having Flywheel is kind of hard to deal with when you're playing a bomb bomb just because Flywheel is great at dodging one of the bombs. Um, Flywheel is great at dodging his bombs, so for example, if you were to dodge like a time bomb, uh, that would basically force the bomb to be on cooldown, and if he's out of bombs, that you're forced to just kind of wait out. He's forced to wait out those couple of seconds to end up just like catching up and putting down the same amount of bombs. Here, Acrobat's trying to go through the window, um, and of course, Bomb Bomb's just putting down some bombs, but with Acrobat's leap ability, it basically almost guarantees him vaulting over objects through windows. Uh, pallets and then just low to the ground uh, objects so he can get some distance. Here, Bombon ends up wasting his warp for the first hit. This is typically not really the best option. Ooh, ends up missing the bomb chains altogether. I believe he tried to go for a uh, double chain. Here, Weeping accidentally tries to give him for hit. No, still misses the hit due to Bombon's ah, small range. Tries to bomb into death. Weeping did kind of force himself to be out in the open. This is the punishment that we are seeing for him not really minding his business getting too close. He tried to go for a stun, and ideally it would have worked, but Weeping's rocket comes out a little bit too slow. Um, it's moments like these in tournament where I'm kind of just like, man, because Acrobat was doing fine just by himself. He didn't really need any assistance. He had a lot of distance, and Drom accidentally... And a GG Center accidentally ended up wasting that warp really early on. So now he's out of warp. And of course, Weeping just getting the distance that he has, despite getting a little bit of damage earlier from two chips, he's still managing to 
by a little bit more time. Explorer's already finished one cipher. His second and third ciphers are 89 and 33. Again, Bomb Watch is trying to bombard him with all these bombs, trying to give him no room to breathe. Ends up taking a hit right here, I believe, before he can make it to this pallet. A little bit unfortunate um, that he ended up taking the kite that Acrobat was originally, you know, kiting since... Uh, I feel like the Acrobat was doing pretty well before the Leaping Interference, but it is what it is. These moments happen, whether it's in ranked or tournament, you just gotta live with it. Here, again, since Bonbon already wasted his warp, he has no choice but to just try and pressure Cyphers the old-fashioned way, just by throwing bombs and trying to buy a little bit of time for him. Um, ends up using that time bomb to get a chip hit on the Acrobat, who does have wanted order. Wildling is coming over to save right now. He does have Tide Explorer, of course, staying miles away from the Bonbon. Don't want him anywhere near, since he's gotta focus on Cyphers. And now, Wildling's about to get bombed to death. This is really scary. Oh my god. Okay. Bo uh, the Wildling is going to end up going down as a result of Bonbon's incredible camp. Again, I was saying this earlier, but Bonbon's camp is typically where he shines the most. It's really difficult to go up against him uh, camping without a strong rescuer. For example, like Coordinator would have been a great pick, but since she got banned, uh, we're forced to be dealing. Uh, we're forced to have Wildling on the team. Um, other options too. I think they were perma banned, but other options too that you could pick for trying to save against Bonbon. Would be you know like mercenary yeah, Charles patient um, car merchant like those would be ideally like some better characters that uh, can safely go to the chair without getting cut off or um, getting hit with some bombs before they can even make it to the chair since they just have abilities that work. Another thing too, Bon Bon right now he's unsure whether or not he wants to camp or he wants to leave. He's doing his best to pressure the explorer. I think he ends up just committing to him. Uh, for what, from my memory, I feel like he, I think he ends up committing to the explorer just because he has the page. Um, Wildling ends up saving the weeping. He does teleport. Gets a little too late. I think he gets lost here. No, okay. He ends up finding the weeping. I don't remember if he chairs him. Okay, nice down on the Wildling. Okay, Wildling didn't use his Force Heal, so as a result of him interfering and throwing down that pallet, the Weeping is going to get away. Explorer is down over here, too. This isn't really the ideal situation we want, but because of the early game and the fact that uh, the fact that Bonbon also wasted his warp, the last Cypher is close to being done at 80%. The Weeping kind of just needs to keep his distance. Everybody, unfortunately, is injured, which is no surprise because with Bonbon, it's pretty hard to save without receiving some damage unless, of course, he just accidentally hits the chair or misses, misses his bomb chains altogether. Um, trying to just weed out the Weeping and just letting him slowly approach while also trying to keep an eye on this Explorer since he is on the ground. If I think Explorer picks himself up while Weeping comes over here, and instead of trying to hit the Explorer, I believe he tries to bomb Explorer to death. See, because he's putting all these time bombs. Wildling is already over, over half, but it's not really going to matter. He, no, okay, he tries to go for the hit, ends up missing, gets the hit off of Wildling. Unfortunately, though, Explorer does have Tide, so they are going to get some distance. Here, I think they have a horrible pop because they don't pop right away, and I think by the time they pop it, it's a little too late because yeah. Bomb Bomb's not in a hit stun animation or anything. So, of course, Explorer's already a little too... Oh, he, a little too close for comfort. Not really sure which route to go. Lack of miscommunication. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ends up knocking out the Explorer as a result of poor communication and poor timing of that cipher, of that last cipher pop. Here, he doesn't share the Explorer. Ends up just wasting his teleport to come over here. Fortunately, he does find Weeping. Not able to get close enough, though, since, again, Bobo is pretty slow. Even without his rockets, just from broken window speed boost alone, it's enough to just provide a decent amount of distance between the weeping and the bonbon. This is typically why you, you know, if you get a team comp where you think some people are going to be running flywheel or majority of the team comp will have tied, it's a safer option to pick bonbon just so you don't have to worry about wasting a ton of time. Um, not able to get <laughs> weeping knocked down, unfortunately. Wildling did open up the other gate that's over by back gate. Uh, so now it's just a battle between bombing Weeping before he can make it through the dungeon, and as a result of Bonbon's inability to pressure and be consistent the way he used to be, this is resulting in a three-man. Of course, there's some other stuff to keep in mind. Did this hunter really perform that well? Not really. I mean, he did have a little bit of a struggle early game, and of course he missed his opportunity to use War properly, and ended up having to force, uh, was forced to use it for trying to get a first hit, which ultimately missed. I think the only reason this match happened the way it did is just because Weeping failed that uh, support that he tried since the rocket the timing of the rocket was just not there do i think bombin is a bad character no do i think he's not where he used to be of of course like absolutely um so yeah like it, it is a little sad to see just because i do remember when i first joined he was considered to be like a decent like a consistent tie hunter where you could pick him for like first round of tournaments just to see like where the other team is at you know skill wise 
Um, and most of the time, first round, some, not all the time, but for some regions, like first round, you pick Bonbon, get a tie. If you're able to push for more, you get more. Of course, the meta's like changed a lot since then, like since season 12, uh, when I first joined. But yeah, anyways, I thought, again, it'd be nice to go over Bonbon. Um, so yeah, hope this video kind of helps you guys cope. If not, I understand. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Good luck on your rank matches, and I'll talk to you all later. Peace.